everyone. So I'm kind of changing up the pace a little bit and taking you guys to Jamaica. Um, <laughs> um, so the goal of this presentation are as follows. To contextualize and historicize Revival Zion, to intervene in the debate about Afro-Jamaican religious practices, and as per the theme of the conference, to explore the significance of the seal ground in revival design practice to the ontological security and well-being for its practitioners. So to begin, I want to invoke the presence of Malako Kapo Reynolds, renowned Jamaican artist, sculptor, and former revival Zion patriarch bishop of the St. Michael Tabernacle. I invoke him through his painting, Rising Table, this painting depicts a revival Zion feasting and celebration table and appears to show a community of practitioners who are in different states of spiritual communion. At the age of 16, Kapo received his first vision and began his travels as an itinerant preacher throughout the countryside. In the early 30s, he arrived in Kingston and established his Zion Revival Church in Trenchtown. In the mid 40s, he began translating his visions into paintings. However, most of his early works were lost when they were confiscated by the police as evidence of obia practice. The criminalization of obia is still debated in contemporary Jamaica, and the suspicion of Jamaican religions and characterization of them as devil work and evil is still prominent. The tension between Anglophone ways of being and African sensibilities results in Afrophobic societal and cultural discourses producing a religious landscape in Jamaica that, while undoubtedly hybrid and creolized, often takes on such an anglophone facade that African retention becomes questionable. Unlike countries like Cuba, Haiti, Trinidad, and Brazil, which have been mined by scholars as producers of new world reinterpretations of African religion, Jamaica has been arguably a site of scholastic ambivalence in that regard. Most of the scholarship on Revival Zion is dated and paints a picture of revivalism as a relic of the past. The late anthropologist Barry Shevins, based on his fieldwork conducted in the 1960s, concluded that Revival Zion was dying out and all that was left were old members in rural areas. Later anthropologist Jean Besson, based on her field research in the late 90s and early 2000s, asserted that Revival Zion is vital and is attracting new and young members. I position myself as one who is interested in academic revival and new approaches to the study of Afro-Jamaican religious expression and the dynamics of both African continuity as well as renegotiation therein. So what is Revival Zion? Um, revival Zion, Zion Revival, or Revival Zionism, fuses elements of Christianity, specifically those of the Baptist tradition, with the Afro-Creole spiritual practice known as Mayo. During Jamaica's colonial era, British planter masters did not make it a priority to missionize among the slave populations. Thus, the various Africans in Jamaica were allowed to creatively construct their own Afrocentric spiritual practices, which were counter to the Christian religion of their masters, who mainly belonged to the Anglican Church. These African Jamaicans of Akan, Senegambian, Bantu, Yoruba, Igbo, and Wall of origin sympathized various traditional African practices, which together made up the system of Mayo. The practice of Mayoism was centered on spiritual and physical healing through the use of herb remedies and spirit work, and was often characterized in opposition to another Afro-Caribbean spiritual practice, Obia, which I mentioned earlier, which was considered science and deemed manipulative and negative. To work obia was to use science, that is charms and spells, to manipulate spirits of the dead, called duppies, for evil purposes. Mile was used to divine the use of science against a person and provide counteractive strategies and medicines to rid the individual of such hindrances. The proselytization of Jamaican slaves began with the Moravian Church in 1754, which proved unsuccessful. However, black Baptist preachers from the United States, of whom George Lyle is the most notable, gained a foothold among African Jamaicans. African Jamaicans then developed their own version of Baptist religion, known as Native Baptist, which many scholars consider to be the direct antecedents of Revival Zion. 
In particular, the Great Revival of the 1800s, a period of time in the colony in which many missionaries and Orthodox churches attempted to return to pure forms of Christianity, is considered to have produced revivalism, which is divided into two factions, Zion and Pukamina, based on the years in which they were formed, 1860 or 1861. The 60 revivalists established in 1860 are considered revival Zionists, and the 61 revivalists founded in 1861 are the Pukumina practitioners. The designation of revival or Pukumina is a contested one within scholarship and among practitioners themselves. Pukumina is demonized and its practitioners are thought to work with low order earthbound spirits or dry bones, that is duppies or the dead. Its closer adherence to African forms of spirituality, combined with the pervading Afrophobia, no doubt contributes to its demonization. Revival Zion, on the other hand, is a more Christianized version of Afro-Jamaican religion. Believers emphasize that they are Christians. There is a strong focus on the Bible and biblical angels, saints, and prophets as spiritual messengers, and they shy away from referring to themselves as Pukka practitioners. Pastor Roberts, a revival Zion, or 60 pastor, explains the difference in this way. You have 60 revival and you have 61. We are 60. 61 most of you with a different type of spirit, like occult spirit, like invocation, like demon. But the 60 doesn't really go into that. Sometimes the 60 really got there, but it doesn't dive too long into that. <laughs> You really go over the 61 when you're chugging and jumping, but it doesn't really dive too long. They try to come back out, it can create a different feeling. <laughs> so, Pastor Roberts mentions the different feeling and different spirits which separates 60 revivalism from 61 Pukamina. This leads into a deeper look at the embodied rites and practices of Revival Zion, which are inextricably linked to the sacred space of the mission grounds or seal ground. The practices of Revival Zion that stand in contradistinction to Orthodox Jamaican Christianity and render its African derived are devotion to a community of spirits, animal sacrifice, feeding earthbound, airbound, and waterbound spirits, feasting altars or tables, and the focus on spirit possession. The central focus of Revival Zion worship service is communion with the spirits and one's first messengers through spirit possession and trance. The characteristically African dimension of Revival Zion theology and cosmology is the belief in an invisible domain that mirrors the temporal, human realm of the everyday. The veil between the material human world and the unseen spiritual world is permeable in African cosmology, especially during times of tribulation.